actually not that complicated. It's just, you know, remove the cars and, yeah, and then, give and the it space all just, back to the people, and it's great. It's true. I mean, people will come out. Over the past few years, we've been working to try to capture the experience of riding bikes to share it with others. We want to be able to welcome more people into this space by sharing a true experience many of us have been fortunate enough to enjoy. It's a challenge to do it right, and I'm not sure we are fully there yet, but I figure I'd document the process getting there. My new friend Charles, with loads of film experience, has been helping us to build our new setup, and this is one of our maiden voyages together. There you it's go. rolling. Rolling. I mean, this is like six months of planning. Oh, yeah. A little lower angle and a few more little tweaks, and I think we'll be ready to go. Cameras on cameras on cameras. <laughs> cameras on cameras on cameras. I hope you enjoy as we geek out on bikes, cameras, and the serendipitous moments that make life great. How are we doing with our exposure? Looking okay. I'm looking, oh, it's, that's too bright. Look at that waveform. Oh, you're gonna teach me something about waveforms? I never look at this stuff. You never look at the waveform? No, nah, man. So, you, like, oh. <laughs> you shoot stuff? Uh, well, I'm an amateur photographer, but yeah, I used to work in the business. Yeah. We wanna go down that way? Yeah, we're gonna go this way. I'm gonna follow you. I'm Couple. just touring around. Oh, okay. A big part of the topic today, actually, for us, is about capturing these moments we're trying to do it in a professional way, in a way that we could eventually get this type of stuff on TV, right? Yeah. Sure, we could just use GoPros, right? And many people say, oh, just get a 360 camera. What are you doing with this $10,000 camera That's setup? That's a much more intimate portrait. Listen, people are getting more and more sophisticated in their viewing habits. They're used to the GoPro. Yeah. But something like this, they're not used to. Nice meeting you, dude. Nice Take care. to meet you. You know, people say in business, you know, you should network and stuff like that. Be, if you just ride a bike, you're just like naturally networking. You can't help it. So with the Navy Yard in the background, should we introduce ourselves? Yeah, let's do it. All right, so about a year ago, I was testing this whole crazy remote camera rig. Around about that time, I met you. Yeah, so I was shooting another bike rig. I had permission to be shooting where I was shooting. You were the first of four people to approach me that day. And for whatever reason, I thought you were a cop. I'm in a white van. Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> and you were like, van. what are you doing? And I was like, I have permission to be here. And you were like, no, I just want to talk about bikes. And I was like, oh, okay, we can talk about bikes. But I, I don't know why I thought you were a cop. You do not have cop energy. Definitely not cop energy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's the true thing about bikes is that you can't help but meet people constantly when you do bike stuff. Especially when you got a, you got a bike and you got a camera on a bike. And I was like, hey, you're like, cool bike. And you're like, oh, you're Chris at Propel, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, you put it all together. And I'm like, yeah. oh, those serendipitous connections, they just happen, like, they don't happen when you're when you're in a car. They just, they, they, they just can't. The one exception is just like total thirst. Like I have a buddy who's very handsome yeah. and he tells stories about being in LA and like someone will tap on his window and he'll roll it in the window and they'll be like, meet me at a bar for a drink. But like, he is very handsome. I've never had that to happen That is to not me, my but, experience uh... of life in cars. But if you take thirst out of it and you just want to live a life where you like can randomly bump into people, cycling gives you this opportunity where you're constantly sort of having these little interactions that are sort of, I imagine what life was like before car transit. I imagine in colonial America, Ben Franklin ran into people on the street and just chatted with them, I'm assuming. Rolling past the, the bridge shot. We got, we got a little bridge action. All right, all right. We got a little Instagrammable moment. All right, I'm gonna come in. Oh, sorry, buddy. Sorry, there's not enough room. Not enough room. We're getting honked at right now. Yeah. We've got a bike lane, and then the bike lane was blocked by a truck, and people are annoyed at us for going around the truck. Let's pull through here. Pull up on the right. So I'm a filmmaker and a bike nerd. I wrote a book on cycling called the Urban Cycling Handbook or the Urban Biking Handbook that came out like a decade ago. And I've always been sort of like bicycle obsessed. You know, when I first moved to Los Angeles in the year 2001, you could like count the number of people riding bikes. Like you knew them all because you saw them on the street and you like waved at them and you're like, oh, we're the people who ride bikes. So I work in the movie industry, which is like a, an industry that does a lot of shit with like trucks. You know, in the last couple of years, I started getting really excited about like, well, what could we just do on bikes instead? What is all this stuff we could do where like the whole production was on cargo bikes? So that's around when we met. I'm going to keep making movie stuff, but I would like my movie stuff and my bike stuff to be the same stuff. Why not cross those worlds? I mean, and I, I, I don't 
at all come from the, the camera world. What's drawing me to it is the ability to, to tell the story of what's going on with bikes. Well, I mean, I just think your life is fundamentally different when you ride a bike everywhere. And I haven't seen any depictions in media that come anywhere close to capturing what that's actually like. There are a few famous movies about delivery riders. Right. But they never actually catch how different everything in your life is. The people you meet, the connections you make, how you think about a city is different. If you just take normal car-centric thinking and then you make the characters ride bikes, I think you're missing something big. And for me, I, like, I'm less interested in trying to figure out how to make cinema that like captures like action cycling because like I don't do that. People yeah. are always like, oh, you're into bikes, do you watch sports? And I'm like, not, not really. I just like to ride my bike places. There's like all these different types of bicyclists as a country, like us trying to like identify people as cyclists is a bad thing. Countries like the Netherlands that don't seem to actually use this terminology are better because of it, because it's just, that's just a person that rides a bike like everybody else does. All right, another interesting intersection. I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna go ahead of you. You're gonna go big? We're gonna try not to run over this cat can of uh, cat food. So, yeah. It has active track and autofocus and stabilization built all into the unit so that it's just like there. You strap it to a camera and we've got it on a little vibe plate. And the little vibe plate is supposed to sort of smooth out the road vibrations so that you have an easier time. So if you smack this on a vibe plate, and you put it in the right mode, it's like the whole deal sort of comes together in one little unit. But this is like dedicated monitor with like antenna and it like all it's doing is controlling that and it does it full time. All right, so we got this crazy setup. It's, it's a good opportunity to kind of validate with the audience on YouTube, like are, are we moving in the right direction? Is this thing a crazy idea? Like my mission, my goal is to get more people out on bikes. Yes. And I think that this is a good way to do it. There's many different ways. Yeah, we need bike lanes, we need bike parking, we need better bikes, all that sort of stuff. But we also need people to understand what bikes are, the benefits to them. And I think that they can do that through video. So I think it's a greater need to actually help the people that don't bike understand what biking is about, help expose people to this beautiful gift that we get to experience on yeah. a regular basis, right? The thought here is that it's less about like this cool derailleur or this cool roll-off hub, and it's more like this is what life is like when you're living it by bicycle. And the thing that I love so much of your channel is it really captures like a community vibe of like, oh shit, like this is the kind of community that you get to have with people. And we get to experience our city have all these special little moments, these unexpected moments that were not planned for. They enjoy the adventure of getting up in the morning, the adventure of like riding by the park and seeing people. It's easy to drive by everything, but on a bike, you kind of see everything really up close and you really get to feel the community in a way that I don't think you're feeling when you simply are driving by. And that's essentially like what I want to build. And I'm seeing this community build up and grow around the channel as well because I think a lot of people that resonates with, but I don't really know like how to do it exactly. So I need help. You, you've yeah. been helping me and I I'm appreciate trying. it. And, and Tara's amazing. And unfortunately she's not here today. We, oh we do have Steven. Steven. So Steven, come on out and say hi. We got Steven helping us out today. This is Steven. Steven's been amazing. We got all the cameras and this and that. We've been talking about how do, how do we support this thing? How do we make it viable? I'm not trying to get rich on this. It's never been about that, but it is challenging to support all this on my own. And I don't really know. We've talked about Patreon, you know, manufacturer support. I want to make sure that we're able to retain the creative freedom just to record and, and you know, oh, it's not a specific brand or this and that. It's just like, this is a cool story, let's cover it. I mean, I wanna hear what the community thinks. For me, I've always been a big Patreon fan. There's like four Patreons I support. They're all podcasts. They're all podcasts that do stuff I regularly like. One of them, Last Podcast and Left, got like millions of dollars to Spotify. And I was like, should I turn off the Patreon? And then I was like, I enjoy it enough that I feel like supporting it. So for me, the model of the future is if the community likes these videos, building a Patreon. I do think that probably having the ability for people to like maybe vote on some of the things, like oh. maybe having supporters like have some level of say in like what we do and what we cover. And we could even like just like open up the financials on like yeah. what things are and like what it actually costs to get this stuff done. I feel like this is something that people value and want to put out there. 
I guess what I'm doing is like asking for help, asking for feedback, asking like, yeah. where, where do we go next from here? Regardless, one way or another, I'm gonna keep making these things. Like whether I end up going broke doing it, <laughs> it's fine because like, I feel like if my mission is to get more people out on bikes, this is one way that can do it like more than anything else, especially as we build the audience and that sort of thing and share the true experience, right? Because yeah. Nothing against anybody that uses GoPro or this and that, and nothing against GoPro. We're using some GoPros today, but I don't feel like it, it shares the experience on the same level. Well, I mean, if it did, good movies would just all shoot GoPro, right? Like, GoPro is great for, like, a specific angle, a specific thing. For me, it always goes back to the face. And, like, I want a shot where I can see a face, I can see their eyeballs, I can see what they're looking at, I can feel connected to them. And for me, as somebody that, you know, likes to look into the future and feel like I can visualize things, I can see a future where this is like viable and we're doing one of these a week or a, a, a couple of them even a week or, or you know, traveling all over the world and, and covering maybe some of the most interesting and important and influential people that are on bikes and helping to tell their story to help elevate the story of bikes. So that's the idea. I think I've talked a lot and we're gonna learn a little bit more about Charles, where we're going with this thing and, and what, what, what else you got going on. Let's, you know, hear a little bit about this project that you got going on. Okay, up. cool. So maybe we could chat a little bit more on our, our way back. Let's do it. All right. Let's cool. Roll. You know, so the other question is we end up focusing on these rider stories. Of course, I want to like record the bike advocates and everybody else and like the people that are really interesting. But we also want to like record people that like help elevate the message and I know that that might seem like vain to some people but like recording celebrities and like influential politicians and stuff like that like I mean Eric a, Adams is a bike guy right and if he's gonna be out there and being like I'm a bike guy well then I would love to do a video where I see what biking in New York is to him and like right. what that experience is or like, Anne Hidalgo in, oh, in Paris I mean and, I mean come on don't make us don't don't dream so big Anne Hidalgo what? in Paris would hey be I mean I, look, what a day that would be when I started the e-bike thing people were like you're freaking nuts you're opening an e-bike shop in a place where it's illegal what are you doing <laughs> and now e-bikes in New York so Anne you know if you're watching I don't know you but uh, I'd like to know you and I think other people would like to know you in this type of context I think there's a real opportunity with telling stories in this format to tell stories in a new way with different information a couple months ago there was that insane New York Times article that was like Paris is promoting cycling and is it too far and all of the article was like this one time I walked into a crosswalk and a cyclist whizzed by Oh my God, what are we doing? And I was like, how many times have you stepped into a crosswalk and almost been hit by a bus in your life? Like, get over it, guys. But I remember thinking like a video in which you like traveled with one of the people who's like being like, here's my old commute and here's my new commute. Everyone would be sold. It's communicating the vibe, but it's also legitimately trying to make a dent in the safety factor. To show what the real experience is because it's like, I'm not trying to, you know, be rude by riding in the street or taking the full lane. Yeah. I'm trying to just not die. Yeah. Look at that. I mean, this is what I we're, mean, this is what we're avoiding right here. Yeah. All right. A little tight, but look, I could catch you like that, Charles. So yeah, what am I working on now? I'm working on a project. I'm trying to get a documentary going about Los Deliveridas Unidos, which is a union of delivery riders in New York City. There are thousands of delivery riders in New York City. Somewhere between 10 and 50, I think. If you don't live in New York, I don't know if this has affected every city. Like my friend in Minneapolis was like, oh, this hasn't come to us. But New York, and I know Boston and LA, really survive on the backs of e-bike riders delivering everything. And especially in the pandemic, when people were delivering all of their meals and getting their groceries delivered, like. We have this army and it's all on bikes because that's the only way it would work. Like if you put every one of them in a car, it would cost too much gas money and there would be too much traffic and nothing would be fast. And I get so frustrated when you hear someone complaining about like, oh, those deliveries, they're all riding like crazy. And I'm like, well, it's our fault for not giving them all dedicated bike lanes because the city needs them. So I'm working a little bit with the union. I'm trying to do a bigger documentary on them because I think it's a story that like, in the middle of the pandemic, they formed a union because they didn't legally have bathroom access. They go into a restaurant and pick up the, food, but they say, oh, no, no, you, you can't come in here You're and not use, allowed the, to use, the restroom. use the bathroom. Because they don't work for the restaurant, they work for the app. They work for Relay or Grubhub or one of those other multi-billion dollar companies that you use to order the food. And so the restaurants were like, no, you don't work for us. Because it used to be 10 years ago, if I ordered pizza, it came from a delivery writer who worked for the restaurant. 
Right. And so they had a place to use the restroom. They had a place to stay out of the cold when it was cold out and they weren't doing a, a run. But now that it's moved to the apps, it's this completely different job where the app is constantly working to maximize your time and grind more out of you. Where I am now is I want to actively pursue telling stories that line up with my passions, which at this moment are like the way cycles enable a city to function, how that affects the people that live in it and work with it. I think a lot about the means we use to produce things. Right. And what our values are around that. Are we over consuming to, to, to make the thing? So like if you're a bike company and I'm like, I'm going to do an ad. So I hire a traditional film crew and they bring out a bunch of five ton trucks and they bring out like a camera car to get shots or a motorcycle. Like, is that reflecting the values? I'm trying to find a way to make stuff that looks good, that looks cinematic. I mean, my, my goal is, is beautiful images that touch people. And finding a way to do that in alignment with like my other values of like, let's, let's do shit on bikes. Cool, so we're, we, we came full circle. We're getting back to the Navy Yard here. And you gotta go pick up your daughter. And actually, can to, you just tell us like wh what else you do in the yard? Because you also work in this building over here. This building with these weird towers on top. So my day job is I'm a professor of filmmaking at a public film school. So we're public, we're mission driven. Our mission is to promote cinema careers to New Yorkers or anyone from around the world, but to promote diverse voices. We're 50% female, we're 40% students of color. We really work actively to try and make filmmaking a job. And I'm very fortunate to, to have both of you guys along with me today. And I, I hopefully you guys enjoyed what we shared today. I think we're really getting somewhere here and um, I'm excited about it. I'm excited for the future of what this becomes and our, yeah. you know, working together. And again, don't worry. I know you guys are a big fan of Tara. She's not going anywhere. She is in California, we're in New York, but she'll be back out here soon enough. I think one of our next projects together is gonna to be going to Eurobike. This has been amazing. I appreciate you taking Dude, the time. This is so much fun. And, um, I had you know, a great morning. This was awesome. And just the last point, as I shared before, we're, I'm, I'm really looking for some feedback, looking for the direction of where we go from here. Let us know what you think. Nonetheless, I think we're gonna to continue to work together, continue yeah. to try to tell this story, continue to try to elevate the stories of bikes and people using them and, and really like how great that makes communities. I, I, I really think some of the things that are missing from communities today can be changed with, with bikes, uh, particularly as bikes as transportation. So thanks again. Talk to you soon. Peace out. I'm going to go pick up my daughter. Let's do it. And the camera's going to follow you until it can't follow you anymore.